Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a faux shakutite, which is a beautiful bluey, greeny, chippy choppy-ish, not only chippy choppy though, kind of stone. Um, so I've got everything I need here. Right, so I've got a piece of cernit translucent here, just a little log of it. That's going to get chopped up and then I'm going to be adding some sapphire cernit alcohol ink. You don't have to use Cernit, you can use any brand of um, alcohol ink and you don't have to use Cernit either, you could use Primo. I would recommend going with a whiter translucent clay though, so like Pardo Cernit or Primo white translucent. So that's going to be that and a chippy choppy. I've got a tiny piece of Pardo translucent aqua. Now you could, if you haven't got any Pardo, you could just um, get a similar size piece of translucent clay and colour it with a turquoisey kind of blue. But to make it even more translucent, I'm actually adding another piece of translucent into that, and that's going to get um, thoroughly mixed together. Here I've got some more Pardo um, translucent aqua. Not a great deal, just a little chunk. Um, it's difficult to gauge it really, but I'm not doing a very big block, so. And I'm gonna add some drops of alcohol ink to that and thoroughly mix it in. In fact, I might as well just do that now. So I've got my Lagoon Blue from Cernit Alcohol Ink. And I'm just, and this lid's broken, so I've got to dip my brush in, but um, just a little bit. It's just to make it a little bit bluer, not quite so green. So I'm just gonna brush some of that on there probably equivalent to two drops, maybe just a fraction more. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and that's gonna get thoroughly mixed together. And I've also got a very thin sheet of Cernit Translucent rolled out onto um, a number eight on my pasta machine, which is very thin, zero being my thickest setting. I've got another little ball of Translucent here, probably, I don't know, three or four pea sizes approximately and I'm adding a little bit of um, jade green from the Pardo clay again you don't have to use Pardo just any dark green will do and that's going to get thoroughly mixed into that and then last last but not least I've got a tiny little piece of copper this is Pardo copper but you can use any copper and that's just going to get chopped up so what I'm going to do first is let this dry Go off camera and mix these two pieces in together. When that's dry, I'm gonna mix that in together and then I'll come back. Oh, I forgot to mention, I've got another chunk of um, Cernit here. And just to give a little bit of variation of the, the bluey greens, I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of the Lagoon, the Lagoon ink to that as well and then that's going to get thoroughly mixed in. That's just a tiny bit, probably not even two drops of ink on that. So I'm going to go and mix all those in and I'll be back. So I've mixed my colours. So this was the little tiny piece of Pardo translucent aqua mixed with another piece of another chunk of translucent mixed together. That's rolled on very thin to a number eight again, but that's going to be for down the road. So I'm going to put that to one side. This is the um, Pardo Aqua mixed with a tiny little bit of the Lagoon alcohol ink and that's rolled onto a number five. Like I said, I've already got um, some translu uh, Cernit Translucent rolled onto a number eight. And then this is the green mixed with Trans. That, I'm not doing anything with it yet. That's the, um, what was this one? I've already forgotten guys. Oh, brain fart moment. Anyway, there's some there with something mixed in it. And then I'm going to chippy choppy this. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was the translucent mixed with a tiny little bit of the lagoon just to give it a variation. That's right. Brain fart. So I'm just going to take that larger chunk of um, Cernit and I'm just going to chop it up because this is just going to be some chippy choppy. Like so. And I'm going to grab some paper in a minute. 
probably should be wearing gloves for this. I'm going to get ink all on me, aren't I? Let me just move this out of the way. <clears throat> and I'm going to just take that sapphire ink that I told you about. And I'm just going to coat this in that. So that's all I'm doing with that. I'm just going to grab a brush so I can get those pieces nice and covered and make a mess everywhere. I'm going to let it dry. And then maybe cut into it a little bit more. Probably will actually. Some of those chunks look quite big. But just for now, I'm just roughly chopping and covering with the alcohol ink. No mixing it in, just on the surface of the clay. And that's what creates lines or veins. And then because it's translucent as well, the um, colour will kind of reflect through the translucency. So there's that. I'm just going to go and tidy that up and I'll be back. I've got that covered and I've just put it on some paper so it can dry a little bit quicker and I'm just going to put that to one side. I forgot to mention, you're also going to need some white pearl mica powder. I use the My Spring um, version. I love the My Spring mica powders. I've got them all listed. Well, not all of them. I've got a lot of them listed in my Amazon storefront. So I'm going to be using that and you'll also need some translucent liquid clay. I'm using Kato, but you can use Sculpey. All right, now let's start with this then while that's drying. I've got that strip, that, that piece rolled out onto number five, like I said, and then the translucent rolled really thin onto a number eight. And all I'm going to do with this is just build a little stack with it, rough and ready, and just take the colour, top it with trans, take a little bit more colour, top it with trans doesn't have to be perfect just making a rough and ready little block I'm going to take my blade blunt side down and just chop through that this is just to help give it a little bit of a fractured look like so I'm just going to put it up at the sides a little bit to start forming it into a block another piece of that on top of there that can go there I'm not being precise, it's just very, like I say, very rough and ready. Again, blade blunt side down and just chippy choppy some lines through it, like so. Let me just move this out of the way, that's irritating me. And I'm just kind of button it up a little bit. And also what I'm going to do, once I've added this other piece of trans on top, give it a little squish. I'm just going to take little bits and like the edges where it's a little bit untidy and they can just be popped on top. It's just all to give it a little bit of texture, guys. Okay, squish it down again to form it into a block and then just keep on layering. Translucent colour, translucent colour, blade side down, blunt side down rather of the blade and chop through and keep doing that until you've used all of the clay. I've put that last little piece of translucent on the top. I'm doing my final cut into this. Just little random cuts. And then I'm just going to form it into a block just to make sure everything's stuck together nicely. like so and all I'm going to do now is chop into this and chop into these as well okay so chippy choppy time so just cut it all up but you're getting like an, a little pattern running through because of all the pushing down with the blade that you did okay don't worry if it sticks together too much we can help separate these chunks by using some mica powder in a minute so just roughly chop doing that until that whole block's chopped. Okay, so that's pretty rough chop, a, a rough chop at this point, but I'll come back to it. I'm just going to put that to one side. Same thing with this, just a rough chop. And put 
to one side. Now these pieces are going to be chopped really, really small, almost, this is going to be almost crumb like, this is going to be really, really small, but maybe not as small as the copper. So obviously I'm not going to show you all of that on camera because it's going to take a long time, but we're cutting this really small. But it's just easier to give it a quick rough chop for now and then add the mica powder to help separate the chunks. So that's all I'm doing right now. But like I say, this copper is gonna be teeny tiny, teeny tiny little pieces. And Pardo's a little drier, so it's easy to get that look. But that's all I'm doing for now, okay? So I'm gonna put that to one side. I'm just gonna to check to see if this is dry yet, which it probably isn't. I think it might need a little bit longer guys so I'm just going to go off for a little bit and make sure that's completely dry before I continue. Now this is mostly dried I think it's completely dry but I'm not overly worried I'm just going to get my mica powders now and apply a little bit to each of the chopped up areas. Chopped up areas? <laughs> I can't get my words out today guys. My chopped up <laughs> elements. <laughs> oh dear. Not a great deal, just a little dab here and there. Okay, and this is gonna help separate those chunks back up. And then we can see how much more we want to chop these pieces. And it also gives a nice little shine and glimmer, which is kind of what you want in a faux stone. So I'm just tumbling all that in there like that. And now I'm just gonna go back in and chop some more. Another little tumble. I think that's probably good for that. So that can go to one side. Same with all the other chunks, separate chunks. Just separate it a little bit with the powder. I've got an itch. And then chop again. I'm not going too small with the rest of these, apart from those two, the green and the copper. Decent sized chunks, like so. Put that to one side. Same with this one. Oh boy, I don't know what's wrong with me. I am so hot and I don't even have the heat on. I'm just really really hot guys like sweating hot um, I don't know I just am let's tumble that now and that's as much as I'm going to cut that this is going to get chopped super fine I'm just going to tumble it in that little bit of mica powder just to give me a helping hand and chop 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 really really small Like so, I'm thinking maybe just a little bit more. It's really super fine. Chop, chop, chop. Okay. Put that to one side and then this is gonna be small but not quite as small as the copper. And it's really as simple as that, but the trick to get it to look looking like the stone that you're trying to replicate is A, to try and get the right colours, as close to the colours as you possibly can. Um, chop in each individual pile to the correct kind of size that you see in the stone. So like obviously uh, there's a lot of little bit of, lots of little bits of copper, tiny, tiny pieces in the stone that I'm doing. And then also strategically placing all these elements together. It's not just a case of chucking it all together. And I found that that's the best way to make it look like the stone that you're trying to replicate. Okay, so I think that's 
probably enough for that maybe no maybe just a little bit more okay that's good all right so you've got some larger chunks smaller chunks and teeny tiny chunks in this stone um, I wasn't going to do this, but I've changed my mind. Um, I am actually going to be adding some copper leaf as well, but not just yet. Optional, but I've seen some of these stones where it does have like the copper veins running through, so I am going to add some of that as well. I'm just going to wipe my hands down a little bit. Well, my gloves, because they're covered in dust, mica dust. All right, so let me try and think what I need to do next because it's not just a case of throwing it all together haphazardly. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this green and throw in some of the copper and give that a good mix. Just a little bit more of that and a little bit more of that, okay? So that's one pile. And then I'm going to take uh, this that was formed into a block with the layers of translucent and blue clay. And I'm going to add, what am I, oh yeah, that's right. I'm going to add some of the other blue that was just chopped up. And that was the translucent mixed with a little bit of the lagoon. It's just to give it a variation of color. I'm just throwing all that together. And what I'm actually going to do is take a tiny little piece of the dark blue. Let me just move that out of the way. Just a tiny little, just one little piece like that. And I'm going to do little tiny chops of this as well. I might need a little bit more mica powder for that. So I'm just going to grab that. Dun, 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 dun. Just drop some of that on there. Give it a little tumble. Try and help separate the chunks a little bit. And chop it again. I want to get it fairly small. Okay. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of the copper into that pile as well, just a little bit. And then what I'm actually going to do is put the remaining green and copper together and some of this together. I probably should have chopped those bits a little bit smaller. So chop up a little bit of this a little bit smaller and then throw it in to the mix. And it's just to give variation, guys. You can kind of mix and match any which way you want to, really, but um, I don't want to mix anything into these two piles. They're kind of separate from each other. All right, so you've got several little piles going on. Okay, like that. Oops. And that. And these two. Next thing, then, I'm going to start with the dark blue. And it doesn't matter if some gets accidentally mixed up in there it's no biggie um i think i'm actually gonna add a little bit more mica powder to this and chop a little bit more because it looks a bit clumpy to me just a tiny bit just dust it on there give it a quick tumble and just chop through again a little bit okay that's better and then all I'm going to do once I've wiped some of this excess powder away I'm just going to start adding the liquid clay so a drizzle on there whoop, a drizzle on there a drizzle on there on all of it basically give it a tumble in the liquid clay And tumble in the liquid clay. I 
This is where it gets a bit sticky and messy. Another tumble. Especially on these finer bits, it gets really messy, guys. It sticks to everything. So I'm just going to wipe my hands down a bit so they're not as sticky. Trying to keep them all separate from each other if I can. A little tumble in that one and a little tumble in that one. Okay. Right, so I'm going to take the dark blue and I've got a few little bits of that stuck on me, but I'm, I'm not too bothered. It doesn't matter if a few little tiny bits escape and end up in this bit, to be honest. This is really, really sticky now because I think I added a little bit too much liquid clay on it. So I'm just going to form it, but I'm not forming it into a block. I'm forming it into a rough, just a rough shape. Like so. And I'm going to wipe this down, get rid of some of that stickiness. Like so. So I'm just going to do that. So I've formed it into just a random little shape. Like so. And then I'm going to grab um, this little pile here with all those different things chopped in, the copper, the gold, and a little bit of that. And I'm just gonna pop that over here and just kind of push it up against that original shape. I'm gonna take my gloves off, guys, because they're getting too sticky and I can't work with them like that. So I'm just gonna use my regular fingers. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more of that to there. Like so. And then I'm going to throw in that tiny little pile. You don't have to do it in this order, but it's much better if you try and keep the components separate from each other. So you've actually got definite differences rather than just throwing it all together, if that makes sense. So I'm just pushing that up to there like that. There's a little bit more of that. And I'm going to grab this and that's going to go over here. So we're kind of surrounding this dark blue area with the other chunks of different colours. Just pressing it all together. I'm going to add some of this over here. It's pretty random where you place things. It's not overly precise, but like I say, just kind of try and keep it a little bit separate. I'm going to put some of that there, some of that there. Try and get all of that in if I can. And then we've got a little bit more of this, which I don't know if I'm going to bother using all that, guys. I don't know. I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to put a line of it here. And I've got a tiny bit left. Actually, I can put that here. Why not? But I think I'm just going to discard this leftover pile. It's not much. Because I think I've got enough here. Alright, so once you've done that, it's just a case of um, forming it into a block. Which is typical of a chippy choppy. So once you've got all your little components where you want them to be, now you can just start forming it into a block. But can you see, I've made sure I've kept them all separate from each other. And that's what makes it more of a realistic looking stone rather than just throwing it all together. Chippy Choppy looks nice like that anyway, but then it's not gonna be reminiscent of the stone that you're trying to do. It's just gonna be, um, a faux stone of some kind. Okay, another little wipe. Just move that out of the way. And let's carry on with this. Okay, 
So form it into a block, make sure everything's all nicely stuck together. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is make some cuts into this to give it some copper veining. And you've seen me do this before, but again, this is another um, way to make a stone look, look a little bit more realistic with those veins running through it. And I'm just going to chop in random places. So just here. Now this is very sticky, A, because it's sewn it, and B, because I put too much liquid clay, but oh well. And I'm just gonna take some of those gold, uh, copper flakes, not gold, copper. Although I suppose gold could work in this, but I've seen it to be more of a coppery look. I'm just gonna get a little bit more of the translucent liquid clay and pop that there. Last time I tipped it up, it all came out real fast. Now it's like struggling to come out, typical. And I'm just gonna put that on top of there like that. So that way it's gonna stick to this clay because metal leaf doesn't like to stick very well. So therefore I use a little bit of the liquid clay. And I'm just gonna chop in another random place and do the same thing. Oops, a bit more of this. Just kind of cramming it in there. Maybe not that much. And I'm just gonna wash it down with that liquid clay, like so. Now you can do as many of these lines as you want to. I'm not doing many. I'll probably just do one more actually. And then we've got to try and form it back into a block so it sticks together. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna do one more cut here and I think that'll be it for the, the veins. Okay. I think that's good. Okay, and put that back together from where it came. So now we've got some veins running through as well. Let me just move that out of the way before I knock it over, because you know I will. Let's wipe this down. A lot of people ask me what the surface is that I'm working on. It's just a, a really large tile. I think it's, I'm not sure of the measurements. I think it's 12 inches by eight, maybe. I can't remember, but it's a large, just a large ceramic tile, very inexpensive, and I got mine from Home Depot. It's a big rectangle one. All right, so I'm just pushing this back together now, and I'm hoping and praying it's not gonna to be too squidgy when I cut into it. I should probably leave it to rest for a little bit, actually, guys, so I think I am gonna do that. But there's the block. Okay. I'm going to let this rest and then we'll move on to the next step. I've let this rest for a little bit, but it, it's still squidgy, so I'm just going to have to work with it. Now, when using squidgy clay, especially CERN it, it can be quite squidgy. The best thing to do is to roll some out and then place it in between two pieces of paper so it can, what they call, leach some of the moisture out. So it becomes a little bit drier, but don't overdo it because then it can become too dry. So just a few minutes, okay? I didn't, I just went ahead and did it, but it's partly because I put a lot of liquid clay in there. Anyway, so I'm gonna take my first slice, a fairly decent chunk, and it's gonna squish. I know it is because it's so squidgy, but that's what it looks like on the inside. And I'm just gonna gently press it and make sure it's all stuck together, like so. I don't want to roll this out too much, big enough to accommodate my cutters. 
Um, and I'm thinking, what do I want to use? I would really like to use one of these stone shaped critters that I got from Kaylee and Clay. Now she's based in England. So if you're in England, she's a great place to go to, to get your super cutters from. I'll leave a link in the description and also in the pinned comment for her shop. And she sent me these stone like cutters. I'm not gonna use the big one. Um, I think I'm probably going to go with the medium size one actually guys so I'm just going to pop that back and if you're interested I've got a pegboard on my wall with obviously the metal pegs coming out of it and I get these big um, rings that you can open up and I just pop my cutters on there and then hang them on the pegboard. The rings are listed in my Amazon <coughs> storefront so Right, so I've got my piece there and I'm just going to give it a gentle roll. I can find my roller. I'm just going to clean that off a little bit. But not too much at this point because I want to add a little extra something and I'm probably not going to do it on all of them, on all of the pieces. So this is more of an experiment because when I did my practice run, I didn't actually do this. So I'll do it on this one and then the rest I'll do with that and then we can see what the difference is so I've rolled way too much of this out but I've got some of that chippy choppy left over from before so I can throw it in that and just make a you know chippy choppy so this is the translucent rolled out very thin onto a number eight with just a few drops of that lagoon alcohol ink and I'm just going to tear some of it off and I'm not going to use the rest not on camera anyway and I'm just going to gently place it over the top of this slice, like so. I hope this is going to work, guys. Like I say, this is a bit of an experiment. I'm going to take my blade blunt side down and I'm just going to cut some little lines through. Not going all the way through, I'm just marking the top of the piece with this okay in a random fashion and then I'm going to take my flexible blade actually I'm just going to give it a little bit of a roll not too much just a gentle roll and I'm going to take back some of that clay so it's just chopping off the very surface and I don't think it's worked because I've cut too much but let me just try again I'm going to pop that down and try again this clay is really squidgy so I'm just pushing my blade back through and I'm just going to get some isopropyl alcohol actually and go over the top of that and that helps to dry it out a little bit believe it or not it draws some of the moisture out so let's see if it works better this time flexible blade and just gently shave off the top So you're just taking off the top, very top layer. I don't know if it's going to work, guys, but we'll see. If not, then, uh, oh well. <laughs> I'm trying to, and because it's translucent, it's going to bake translucent. I don't know if it's working, guys. I think that did. just to give it a few more lines running through the piece. I think some of it's working. It doesn't matter if it's not on the whole piece anyway, so where it doesn't work, I'm not too worried. Get rid of that. I think because the clay is so squidgy as well, I'm having a hard time just shaving it off. But yeah, it's left a few little lines behind so we'll see what that looks like when it's baked. Like I say, just a little experiment. You don't have to do that. But there we go. So I put a thin, thin layer on top and then took some of that thin, thin layer back off. And where the cuts went down, it's going to leave some of it behind. So we'll see what that looks like when it's baked. I'm not holding my breath. So I'm just going to give it a quick roll and actually now that I've done that you can see a little bit better 
where it's left some of those lines, okay? Right. Let's put this back down. I'm actually going to grab a tile because this is so sticky. I'm going to cut straight out onto my tile so I don't have to lift it back up. Let me just give it a quick scrape down. So let's pop that there. Okay. And I'm just going to, I'm probably not going to use that one for this one. I want to see those lines come through. So I want something with a bit more of an open space. So I'm just going to grab, uh, let's go with this puffy tear, teardrop shape. This is from Ojoy Creations. I'll also list her shop in the description always check the description guys and or the pinned comment for further information that's where i put all my links and where you can find my um paypal if you so wish to donate to me very much appreciated every little helps all right so i've just cut that through and we'll see how that is when it's baked okay another little pile for my chippy choppy I'm just going to grab a little wipe and some isopropyl alcohol, otherwise known as rubbing alcohol. You can get it from Walgreens. Just to give that a quick smooth and wipe down. It removes any fingerprints, smooths it out. And that's what that looks like with that top layer on it, but we'll see what that looks like when it's baked. Don't be too upset if it doesn't work out. <laughs> I probably will be a little bit upset, but you know, I just wanted to see. As for the rest of it, I'm just gonna cut through and cut out my pieces and bake and simple as that, okay? So I'll do one more on camera. But there you can see the piece, the slices. I think it looks really cool actually. I'm just gonna take this one, smush it so it's stuck together give it a quick roll and cut it out into a shape. I'll do the other ones off camera, but I'll show you afterwards. I'm not rolling this out too thin because I like my stones to be quite chunky. Just got to make sure it fits the cutter. So I'm gonna pop that one there, give it a little wiggle, side to side, up and down. Oh, I poo, I should have put it on the tile, shouldn't I? Oh well, wish me luck picking this up and it not distorting everywhere. I'll try. Not too bad. Okay, I'm going to gently press that down onto the tile. Give it a little shape because it did get a little bit messed up as I lifted it off. I'm going to get rid of this crumbly edge. and some more rubbing alcohol and a wipe just to clean it off and smooth it out okay so there's those two <clears throat> one with the lines one without the lines i'll do the others without the lines and um i'm gonna go and bake them i'm gonna bake them for an hour and i'm gonna bake them at the highest clay temperature um so 265 is burn it and that's what i'm going to bake it at you can bake at higher temperatures the clay doesn't burn until you hit 350. all right enough waffling guys there's that one and there's that one i'm going to go and bake them i'll do some more off camera and i'll be back all right guys i've um finished these i'll show you this one first i just did a simple wire wrap on this now I don't ever like to show my wire wrapping because I'm like very clumsy with it, but I will leave you a little link of um, how to do this from somebody else that did it. It's an Instagram reel, but I will leave it for you. So there's that one. Now this one's sanded and buffed all over and I love it and it's so smooth. So there's that one. Same thing again on this one, just a simple wire wrap, but I've resined this one so you can see the difference in shine. I love how this one came out. 
Now, I will say one thing. I use the sapphire blue for this. Um, and while I do like it, I think it would have looked a little bit better if I'd used like a navy blue or something because it came out a little bit purplish. I still love it. But if you want to go with a, a more like navy dark blue. All right. Um, some of these stones do have a touch of purplish in them, but I think the dark blue would have looked a bit better. So there's those, that one. And then I did go ahead and use um, a heart cutter that I got from Kaylee and Clay, and it's just a smaller heart, but I love it. Now this wire wrap, I just kind of winged it um, and then added a bead. And this one is also resined. So there's that one. And then I did go ahead and use that um, stone donut cutter that I showed you at the start. Again, that's from Kaylee and Clay, and I will leave a link for her shop. And I just did um, a wire wrap in there. I did a bead chain, and then I put a little jump ring on there and I did a couple of beads there. And I just did a, a toggle clasp for that, but I absolutely love, love this shape. I really like it. So there's that one. So there are all the pieces, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.